So I wake up this morning and start scrolling my YouTube feed and I see this post from Real Talk with Yanni po uh, pop up in my community. She says, who's streaming Black Beauty Effect on Netflix? I haven't heard of the Black Beauty Effect. Um, this is the real deal with how we influence each other. So I saw this post and I immediately went to Netflix because it was time for me to um, start tightening up my hair. So it's like, I might as well tighten up my hair and watch this on Netflix. And I am so thankful that she actually made this post because it sent me over here. That is the real power of being an influencer. Anywho, I'm watching this, The Black Beauty Effect, and I'm, I only finished the first episode and it just made me think about all of the things that I have witnessed um, in my lifetime and how things have changed for Black women in such a short time, um, time span with our hair, beauty, and um, skincare needs. Things have changed dramatically in just a few years, just like two generations, things have changed for us. And I am very, very thankful for that. And this, this show, even in the first episode, you see a lot of history of what Black women have had to go through, Black people have had to go through, because many times our needs have been secondary needs. Like we rarely had products and services that were created for us, we were simply the afterthought, like, oh, yeah, you know, they need something. But what we had to do for the longest time is take products not made for our skin or our needs in mind and like create things for ourselves. And a lot of the times we made something out of nothing. And then from that space is where a lot of entrepreneurs were born because many times things were not made for us. So we just had to create it ourselves. Now, I am going to use myself as an example of how things have changed so much for us in just a short span of time. This is me. This is 21 year old me after doing the big chop. I was 21. I am 42 right now. I am 42. I'll be 43 next weekend. But here I am 21 years old. And when I did the big chop um, more than 20 years ago, there were absolutely no products for my hair. None. There were, I mean, not that there weren't any for my hair. There were none for the natural hair space and dealing with 4C tightly coiled hair. So a lot of times when we were in that whole natural hair movement space, because I was in that space as well, we were taking gels and mixing it with grease and taking it and mix it. We were just doing some things and creating some concoctions so that we could find something that would help keep our curl pattern intact or help keep our twist intact or something. Man, thinking about all of the things that I have seen and gone through over the last 20 years, and it's crazy to say that I have been in, I mean, in the natural hair space for 20 years, things have substantially changed for us because I remember going into, you know, Walmart or the Walgreens or whatever, the beauty supply store, and having to go to a section that was titled ethnic. So you know that they're not making anything for us because we are othered. We had to go to the ethnic spaces. Now, when you go into Target or Walmart, it's called textured space. Um, but that just goes to show that, you know, we are never, we are never, um, cre they don't create stuff for us. And so these big brands, like, you know, I if you watch the series, the women that are talking, and they're talking about, um, makeup at this point in time, but I am absolutely certain that it had the same kind of in, um, historical um, references if you were to talk about hair, that Black women were afterthought. Our curl patterns were an afterthought. And so it probably took a lot of maneuvering Black women moving into the spaces to create stuff for us before the big brand said, oh, there's money to be made. I do want to show y'all my mama. This picture was taken 20 years ago in 2020, I mean, 2001, at the same time that I took um, that other picture. 
she has been rocking a bald fade since I was 16 years old. But also my mother has been into makeup for as long as I can remember. She's been a glamour girl. Um, she's been this woman with, you know, this attitude. You see the attitude coming through. So if you want to know where I get my my assertiveness, my confidence, is from this woman. Um, my mother has been into makeup forever. And I was never into makeup and I'm still not particularly into makeup. Um, she would be selling Mary Kay. She would have her fashion fair. So I am familiar with the, the history of these things because I was in it. I was just not particularly interested in it. Now, I do like it. My mother would put the makeup on me. I just didn't want to learn. Um, and I do like wearing makeup when I have someone do it for me. Um, but I do want y'all to understand that this is an art and the people who do it, the beauty influencers who have been in the thick of things for the longest, they are literal artists. And so many people denigrate makeup because they can't do it. Women who don't know how to do it themselves um, write it off as I just prefer the way I look. Cool. That's fine. But you don't have to denigrate the art. And then the men who want to denigrate the women that wear the makeup, you know, it, it's because they, I, I don't know, they just want to find something to rail against. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to show off my mom. But back to this, I really do want y'all to watch this. Um, I was very, very pleasantly surprised at um, the way they brought in the history, the way they brought in the influencers and how they got started. I love that we are Right now, so many of us said, you know, y'all are not making this stuff for us, so we'll create it for ourselves. They said, um, oh, you don't want to carve out any spaces for us in these um, in these companies? I bet I'll go do it myself. And that just goes to show the, the ingenuity of Black people. This just goes to show how we have created these spaces. And, you know, I know some people see it, they might see the, the undertones as being superficial because we're talking makeup, but it is bigger than that. It is finding a need for things, having an entrepreneurial spirit, and then figuring out ways to get it done. And that's what I love about us because they, they always wanted us to be the sidekick. Like we could never really be the main character until just here recently within a generation, we've moved out of being the friend um, of the main character to being the main character. And I'm loving that for us. And I'm loving being alive at that time. And I'm loving that the younger generation of Black women and other women of color can see ourselves portrayed as the main characters and we can carve out our own spaces. So go ahead, watch this. Let me know what you think. Um, let me know if you have any personal stories about beauty and how your life has been impacted, especially if you are a little bit older and have watched things change over the past few years. Go ahead, like, comment, share. And if you are enjoying my commentary, my content, go ahead and give me a follow.